Don't be a stranger in the night Take a chance for some romance Don't copy your eyes We'll love trees no, you Welcome back to another video guys and in this video I'm going to show you how I put together these awesome enclosures for my frill neck lizard Billy and also another Gillen's monitor enclosure down here for Gilbert and Jill, my original pair of Gill and I. I'd say I'm settled and pretty calm. I don't storm in the storm. If not me, then someone like me that knows what to do and how to take care of you. So before we do get stuck into this video guys, I do want to kind of touch base and let you know that we have had another sponsored jump on board for this channel. A guy that really believes in what I'm doing here and really wants to see me kind of push the boundaries a little bit. And I'm talking no other than Roger from Blue Tongue Morphs. Man, this guy creates some of the best looking blue tongues in Australia, if not the best looking blue tongues in Australia. And I cannot believe the kind of color morphs and stuff that are out there these days, because I've got my head well and truly out of the morph game as far as blue tongues and carpets and all that sort of stuff go. He's really boosting things here a little bit and I really appreciate his support. So guys, make sure you do go over to Blue Tongue Morphs on Instagram and Facebook and give them a like to see all these crazy colored blue tongues that he's got going on. He's got some absolutely spectacular looking animals that are absolutely stellar. All right guys, with that being said, let's jump in and let's see how I freshened up these two boxes for my Gillens and also my frill neck lizard Billy. These enclosures were in somewhat rough shape because they've been used for a couple of years now. They've had a couple of backgrounds and things put inside of them. And this tank in particular was actually originally used for my pair, my original pair of Gill and I and also my Kimberley Rock Monitor. After the Kimberley Rock Monitor moved out, I decided to turn it into one big tank essentially by removing the middle floor in between the two enclosures. This was awesome and I'm glad that I kind of had this opportunity because it meant that my enclosure costs were next to none because I've already had the, the boxes themselves but there was a little bit of cleaning to be done. I wanted to start with all fresh substrate because this stuff was kind of an old mix that I've been using for ages where it was like crushed granite and coir peat and sand and what I wanted to do is really kind of just wipe down these walls and clean them up before I actually ended up putting the backgrounds inside of them. Again we're doing the same sort of process that I did in the, the monitor corner where I'm using aluminium boards with the vinyl wrapped over the top of them just for the ease of being able to put them in so so instantly and it's just being done. It is more costly, but in the same time, it's ease of application for me. And me being on a time frame before my kid came out, it was worthwhile. Here you can actually see the backgrounds in their full glory. It's obviously going to look a lot better inside of the enclosures themselves. And we've got this one here for Billy the Frilly as well. For me, I really enjoyed this one in particular because of the contrast between the green and the black on the trees, where the trees had been burnt. These things are so simple to put in, and all I'm using is double-sided tape. It's easy to put on the back of the aluminium and then just press these boards into place. This is my biggest Gillen's monitor enclosure to date. Measuring 120 centimetres long by 60 centimetres deep by about 110 centimetres tall. When you measure it litre for litre, it's bigger than my other Gillen's monitor enclosures. Both the Gillen's monitor enclosure here and Billy's tank above, they both have infrared deep heat projectors, UVB lighting, and then 6500 Kelvin LEDs. They also have a misking system hooked up to them, so if I want to make the room a bit more humid during some of those humid hot summer days to try to increase some activity out of the animals, I have that as an option. Or if I want to stimulate rain, of course. For the time being, I did use some temporary branches in both of these enclosures, although the branches on the right and the left in this tank are still used to date, I do add in a nice big branch for them to climb right up to the ceiling if they wish to. Because the sand in the background images is so red, I didn't bother mixing my sand with any of the play sand or anything that I have done in the past. I really wanted to hit that red colour. I think in total I ended up using about 30 kilos of red sand to actually fill the bottom of this tank. 
As I said, this is a somewhat temporary layout as far as the branches are concerned, just to give the animals somewhere to actually come back into so I can get them inside of the enclosure. They do really love their mane upright as it's really split at the end towards the heat. And this is awesome because they can jam themselves right in there and get so tight in there, or I actually can't pull them out. It does make it a little bit difficult if you do want to check on the animals, but at the end of the day, it's also about their security. If I really needed to get them out, I could. Okay, now it's time for Billy's tank. I can't wait to get rid of these uprights because he doesn't really use as many as I'd like. I had so many plans to actually be able to make this thing just so much better and so much better for the animal itself. I had a strong focus on just having upright branches in this enclosure initially as that's all I thought that I'd actually use. But I made sure that with the future branches that you'll see coming up, I made sure to have some diagonal opportunities for him too. This particular background fits so nice and snug, it was almost hard to get it in. But again, we're just following that same process of double-sided taping these boards into place. I was very impressed with how this background actually looked inside of the enclosure, and I also knew that I was gonna have a bit of a challenge on hand to try to find some timber to actually match it. For the time being, I chucked Billy's old kind of log structure in there and just filled it up with a tiny bit of yuki mulch so he had some substrate in there. And after putting this animal back in here, I actually felt really bad about this. I was looking at this enclosure going, man, I've been keeping this animal so wrong for so many years and I just have to do him more justice. So my main thought was to be able to actually provide him floor to ceiling branches and different sort of opportunities, different thicknesses and different angles in particular. The other thing that I was very conscious about is actually trying to provide more barky textured structures for him as well, as quite often he gets a little bit slippy on some of the smoother stuff that you can find locally here in Sydney. Let's go back to that Gillen's Mono enclosure quickly. Here you can see that I actually ended up finding a nice big chunk of log that you would have seen in some of the previous vlog videos that I've done. This was a bit of a mission to get into place. And albeit a little bit difficult, it was well worth the effort to try to get it in. I did end up packing it out a little bit at the top, just with a piece of old form ply, just so it could kind of wedge in nice and tight. Once I'd replaced the LED and fixed the actual log into place, I added in the new pieces of glass. I was stoked to finally have these pieces into, into the enclosure, just because I finally got a full view of what it's actually going to look like long term. I have to say I was pretty impressed with myself on this one as it allows different sorts of opportunities for these lizards to actually bask on. Not only that, it also gives them the opportunity of thicker logs than what I'd usually put in most of my enclosures for these guys. It's all about opportunities, right? If we give them more, then they can choose where they want to go. And at least you've given them the option. Albeit a bit ugly of a roof of an enclosure, how cool is it to actually see these guys use the opportunity to climb that high? It's still nothing like what I saw in the wild, but it's better than nothing, and it's a bigger space for them to be able to do this sort of stuff. It'll get them nice and close to that UVB if they really want those strong outputs that we saw in the wild. All in all, it's just amazing to see them utilising the space. I can't wait to add a little bit more enrichment inside of this enclosure as far as you know, gum tree branch holders and things like that, which we'll do later on in this video. I think by adding a little bit of cover in there, it'll actually increase the activity of these animals as well. But it's cool to be able to see them cruise around in, in this enclosure and use the different branches for different sorts of activities. Here's a little look as to where they actually like to hang out most of their time in this little crack here. I think long term I still will add some more hollows and things inside of this enclosure. Back onto Billy's log situation. After I had found a few pieces that I was happy with, the, I found that the bark was kind of somewhat, 
I'm going to say a little bit loose on it. I think it would have lasted a fair while, but I think long term I wanted to do something to make it a little bit more secure. So what I did is I thought I'd have a bit of an experiment and I thought I'd crack out some PVA glue. PVA glue is just a basic woodworking glue that's non-toxic. So what I decided to do was basically just paint down these branches to help try to secure the bark into place. I gave these branches three or four coats, I can't quite remember, there was a few coats to kind of secure all this bark into place. It was quite time consuming, but I think long term it's going to be worth it. You do lose a little bit of texture by doing this with the glue, but in saying that, it's barely noticeable unless you're really, you know, nitpicking and looking at it finely. I may be a little bit critical on myself of this. But you can see here how much I have to try to like rough it up and none of it's coming loose. I figured if I could kind of keep like the main texture to it long term, that was my main goal. Because these little claws are going to be digging into this all the time. I mean, worst case, if this doesn't work, I toss it out and start again. From there, I really had to match the colours with what was actually on the, the image on the background. So what I decided to use was again non-toxic acrylic paint and I basically used black and white. I started off with a light grey. From there I did different shades of darker greys, gradually building it up to a black to kind of resemble a bit of a burnt tree trunk. I really wanted that to be a bit of a focus, just so there was a bit of a focal point inside of the enclosure, and also I really like that kind of charred look. Again it'll be really interesting to see how the paint goes long term with the, the lizard's nails. Being a larger lizard he does have the opportunity to tear this sort of stuff up. You can see from here that we've got one sort of main centerpiece that's going to be a really nice thick branch that he can hide behind and this will give him a sense of security in itself. Quite often these guys will just shimmy around branches in the wild and kind of hide behind them. An opportunity that he hasn't had entirely before because the branch has been a little bit thinner. You can also see that there's a kind of Y-shaped branch there which will give us a little bit of an opportunity for him to be able to kind of sit and relax on a bit of an angle. Then on the far edge there we've also got a really thin branch. This will just give him an opportunity if he so decides to actually jump onto this. I do actually have a couple of other branches as well, but I don't want to over clutter his space. So if need be, I will add those into his enclosure. As I was saying earlier, I was going to add a little bit more colour into these branches as well. And I did that just by mixing some simple browns and yellows together to kind of create an almost, I'm going to call it a bit of a greeny brown sort of look and just try to kind of just add some other features to the branches so they weren't just so greyed out. This ended up just giving a bit more pop to the branches. And long term, I reckon this will make it just a little bit more interesting as per the branches on the back of the image in the enclosure. For me, out of both of these builds, I think this is one that hit home a little bit harder. And it's simply because I wanted to give this lizard more, as I felt like I'd been keeping him in it adequately. Don't get me wrong, he always got what he needed and seemed to quite happy and thrive. But at the same time, what's life without a bit of enrichment by actually giving him more opportunities? A simple thing by changing it up for him without trying to stress the animal too much just means that he's going to be able to gain a little bit more from his new enclosure. I used a variety of small brackets and screws to be able to fix these guys into place just to make sure that they're not going to wobble around and cause any accidents. I did this so by also putting screws down through the roof of the enclosure as well as some brackets inside of the enclosure and then covering them in a little bit of acrylic paint just to kind of make them blend a little bit more. For Billy's enclosure being up a little bit taller I decided to just go with Yuki Mulch. It's a pretty forested sort of area from where I took this image so I decided Yuki Mulch was probably a bit more appropriate than just sand just so that it's a little bit lighter for the enclosure below. It's a very simple substrate to use and I've quite enjoyed it over time. Fish Organics and Reptile Supplies supplied me with some good quality gum leaves for this enclosure. I really like these ones too because they kind of give it a bit more of a feel of like a bit of a forest floor.
I want to get a new water bowl for this enclosure, preferably want to get your pet rights, darker coloured ones. Everything in the Exoterra range is just a bit too sandy for my liking and all these dark colours in there, the sandy water bowl that I do have in there seems to pop too much. That's alright, it's an easy fix. And again, I'm just being nitpicky. This is a pretty special moment to be able to put this animal in this enclosure and make him look at home. He doesn't look half bad in here either, and I can imagine him shimming around that branch and just disappearing altogether. He did get a little bit frustrated with me, but I think that's just because I had to put him in a bit of a Tupperware container for a few hours. Anyway, we're not done yet. Now we're still going to make some browse holders as well. And you can see how I made these in a bit more detail on my enrichment video for my monitor corner. But simply put, there's some PVC pipes that I'm essentially gluing together with some end caps and then giving them a bit of a rough paint with some acrylic paints and then I screw them into the back of the branches so I can put gum branches and other varieties of things in there and replace them as needed just to provide a little bit of kind of shade and cover from the lights above. This also brings in new smells and things when you bring in new branches, which is going to help enrich these guys' lives. Simple things like this can make a little bit of a difference. It's not like it's really costing much to do something like this where you're talking a couple of dollars worth of PVC and a little bit of my time, and it's all worth a shot. I just used some small button screws to secure these holders into place. Usually I'd use a drill, but the animals were still in the enclosure, so I decided to keep the noise down for them. Something to note is I actually went back and actually took these holders out again and repainted them with another coat, just to try to match colours a little bit better. A day out with the wife and my son provided me an opportunity to collect some new branches. I collected enough to do a whole bunch of enclosures here, but first off, I wanted to fill Billy's enclosure with some new gum branches as well as Jill and Gilbert's. I made sure to top up the little holders with a little bit of water to try to make these branches last a little bit longer. A great tip that was given to me by one of my viewers was to cut the branches on a bit of a 45 degree angle. Here's a pretty poor shot of how I cut it. I did make sure to cut some of the other ones a little bit more clean. But apparently this just helps with wicking up water and making the branches last a little bit longer in the little bit of water that is inside of these tiny little holders. It's amazing what a pop of green colour can do to these enclosures, even the bright red desert enclosures. Even though the desert is always very sparse, you'll always find some tree being able to last out inside of it. So even Gilbert and Jill's little enclosure did get a couple of little branches, just to kind of liven it up. You can see in the image that's on the background that there is a whole bunch of greenery there too, in amongst all the red sand. This will provide the lizards a little bit of foraging opportunities, they'll be able to cruise on through it, they'll be able to be provided a little bit of security by it. All in all, it just gives it a bit more of a three-dimensional feel. Well, there you have it guys, another video done here, another couple of enclosures ticked off the list. I am super stoked with these ones, and in particular Billy's enclosure, man, I just love the black and the green pop on this enclosure, I think it's absolutely awesome. I really do dig the Gil and I enclosure too, just because it's a really big enclosure for Gil and I, and you know, I have aims to kind of build almost like a Gil and I room one day, where I can kind of just come into a room and it almost be like the centre of Australia, and this is the next kind of step, at least this is a pretty decent sized box for a pair of Gil and I. So with all that being said and done guys, I really hope you did enjoy this video. Please make sure to give it a comment down below, drop the video a like and subscribe if you do want to see more reptile related content and all these sorts of kind of builds coming together. Very soon I do plan on doing a bit of a room tour and showing you off all the enclosures and all the animals here, but I do have another few videos that I have lined up 
ready to kind of record and get out there before I want to get that done. I might be a little bit of a stickler for it, but I almost am a little bit OCD and I really want to just kind of get another couple of things ticked off for this, for this room before I do kind of show it off in essentially all of its full glory. With that being said guys, make sure to check me out on Teespring and Patreon as well if you do want to support the channel even further. All the donations and all the support and all the merch and all that sort of stuff goes straight back into keeping these guys here and kind of building out this room. And it shows how we can kind of just improve captive keeping and what people can actually do at home. You know, all of this is very, very achievable. It's not really overly complicated. Alrighty guys, from me and the lizards in the lizard room here, I will see you on the next video. Make sure to take it easy and I'll catch you then.